Today we'll be presenting perineal urethrostomy for definitive management of severe urethral strictures. From University of Utah Department of Surgery and the Center for Reconstructive Urology and Men's Health. The first consideration in the procedure is positioning the patient. We prefer the high lithotomy position. We use modified candy cane stirrups that have some extra length added to the candy canes. We pad the feet with foam and we use a sacral bump consisting of a bean bag covered by a gel pad. However, multiple methods can be used to position the patient in high lithotomy including some bath blankets underneath the sacrum and yellow fin stirrups. In our patient, the etiology of his urethral strictures is lichen sclerosis. Here you can see the typical appearance. In the first portion of the procedure, an inverted U incision is made in the perineum and the bulbar urethra is exposed for creation of the perineal urethrostomy. An inverted U incision is made with the apex of the U at the bottom of the scrotum. Also, a small extension along the midline is needed going up into the lower portion of the scrotum. The incision is made with bovicaudary through Colley's fascia. It's very important that the inverted U advancement flap is made full thickness to spare blood supply to the tip or apex of the flap. Here you can see creation of the advancement flap. It's created as a full thickness flap pulling the entirety of the flap off of the overlying fascia of the bulbospongiosus muscle. It's critical to keep the flap long enough and to make the apex at the base of the scrotum. The external sphincter and apex of the prostate can be surprisingly deep. Next, the bulbar urethra is exposed. We prefer to incise the bulbospongiosus muscle sharply. Once exposure of the bulbar urethra has occurred down past the central tendon and the bulb has been completely exposed, then urethrotomy will proceed. The next step of the surgery is to open the urethra longitudinally. This longitudinal urethrotomy preserves blood flow within the urethra. The urethra is ventrally spatulated up to the level of the external sphincter. Here you can see the ventral opening of the urethra. It's very easy to get off the midline and skive to one or the other side of the urethra. It's important to look out for the slight whitening associated with the midline and the urethra. Here you can see the white inside of the urethra and a slight urethral opening is made with a knife. Once the lumen has been identified, then a scissor can be used to open the urethra widely. The urethra is now opened along its ventrum, proximally down to the level of the external sphincter. Usually the external sphincter is spared and the disease process BXO, although it may need to be reconstructed if there's dense stricture at the level of the external sphincter. This can sometimes be done with a buccal mucosal graft. This has to be done sometimes with urethrectomy as well. The urethral proximal opening is probed with a bougie sound. Here we can see some remaining stricture and so the urethrotomy ventrally is extended closer and into the external sphincter complex. In the next step, the advancement flap is trimmed so there's not excessive flap and a hump created by the extra skin. The advancement flap is matured to the ventral proximal urethrotomy at the level of the external sphincter and then the rest of the perineal urethrostomy is created. Here the advancement flap is measured and there's some extra and humping of the skin uh, which uh, is not ideal. So the advancement flap is trimmed somewhat 
So there will be uh, tension-free anastomosis, but not extra skin associated with the flap. Now the advance in flap fits without tension down to the proximal urethrotomy. Now three sutures are placed at the proximal urethrotomy, one in the center and one suture on either side of the center. Typically we use 3-0 Vicryl for this purpose. It's important to incorporate the urethral mucosa and then the cut edge of the corpora, spongiosus, adventitia, and then skin. This is true of all the sutures that are placed between the skin and the bulbar urethra in creation of a perineal urethrostomy. After the three sutures have been tied in place at the apex of the advancement flap and the proximal urethrotomy, very careful to probe with a bougie dilator to make sure that the uh, opening at the proximal urethrotomy is wide enough. Additional sutures are used to advance the flap around the proximal urethrotomy. Cystoscopy is important to perform to make sure that you've gone beyond the proximal aspect of the stricture to look for stones and bladder tumors. Now the lateral aspect of the perineal skin is brought down to the urethra. The scrotum is always very loose and can be easily brought to the urethra. However, a large disparity is created between the advancement flap and where the lateral perineum is brought down. It's better to pick a spot below this where there's less of a dog ear created, but there isn't tension. A U stitch is used in order to bring the lateral perineal skin to the urethra and then to the advancement flap. It's very helpful to have the assistant pull the lateral skin of the perineum down so a knot can be created that is tension free. The distal urethrotomy is extended to meet the scrotal incision. The overall length of the perineal urethrostomy should be close to 5 centimeters. This contracts substantially uh, over time and starting out with a large perineal urethrostomy will hopefully prevent contraction in the future to the level where st restenosis occurs. Again, to mature the skin to the urethra, it's very important to incorporate three layers, the cut edge of the skin, the cut edge of the adventitia of the corpora spongiosus, and the urethral mucosa. 3 ovicral or 4 ovicral is used to mature the perineal urethrostomy. The incision between the lateral aspect of the perineum and the advancement flap is the area that's in most jeopardy for skin breakdown. There is tension at this location and often this wound can separate. If this occurs then sits baths and local care usually takes care of healing. The most secure closure that we found is horizontal mattress sutures with O or 2O vicryl along this area. Not too much tension should be placed on these sutures, just enough to bring the skin edges together. And then very precisely, the skin edges are approximated with running 5-0 monocryl sutures. This encourages very good healing within the area. Wound breakdown can still occur along these lateral incisions, but the combination of horizontal mattress sutures along with a very fine closure with 5-0 monocryl has had the best results in our experience. Here is the final appearance of the perineal urethrostomy. It's completely closed. A catheter is placed through the perineal urethrostomy. We typically keep this in place for two weeks while wound healing occurs and it can be kept longer if there's delayed healing. 
This has been a presentation on perineal urethrostomy for definitive management of urethral strictures from the University of Utah Center for Reconstructive Urology and Men's Health.